Welcome to MSPTDA video number 26. Yes, Microsoft Power Tools for Data Analysis. And in this video, just like last video, we're going to see how to compare budgeted amounts to actual amounts. But last video, we used Excel worksheet formulas. This video, we get to see how to do it with the data model and DAX formulas. Now, last video, we used worksheet formulas. And this formula and the variance and percentage variance formulas are relatively easy to create and quick to create. But notice each line is simply product and month. I don't see product totals, yearly totals, monthly totals. Now, we could have done that with the formula, but it would have made it a lot more complicated. With a pivot table, it is easy. We create our measures, drag and drop. And look at that. We definitely have product and month line totals. But there we have the product totals. Down here, we have the yearly total. And of course, the ultimate beauty in pivot tables is that you can pivot it. So I can simply drag product above year. And now I have a different report where I see the particular product, each one of the years, and the various totals. So in this video, we want to see how to create the data model and measures to accomplish this task. You can download this file in the link below the video. On the sheet tables, we have our five tables. We actually have two fact tables and three dimension tables. Now, this is the budget fact table, and each line is at the month product level or grain. Over here on the transaction table, the grain of each line is at the transaction date product level. Now, problem number one is we have two fact tables. Problem number two is I need to compare monthly product and somehow get the monthly product from this table and then compare them side by side. The other problem is that we're going to use star schema. Here's the F transaction table. Well, product and date, those can filter this table. But guess what? In our pivot table, when I pull a particular product or a particular month, I want it to accurately filter this fact table and this fact table. Now, this is not really involved, but I'm going to import this into the data model and show you that the model we're going to create is not going to work with other dimension tables because fundamentally, our budget number has two attributes, product and month. So I have no idea how to chop that number up to use this as a dimension. All right, so we need to bring all of these into the data model. Here's Power Pivot. I already brought these four tables in, so I'm going to click in a single cell in our budget table and click Add to Data Model. I can see five tables there. Now, we'll come back here and build our formulas. But right now, we want to go to Diagram View. We can move and resize our tables. And here's our F transaction date and product. That would be a normal star schema. So I'm going to drag date. That's the one side over to the many side. We have one date for each row in the date table. But of course, we hope we had sales on many dates over here. There's a unique list of products, but I drag it over here. Hopefully, we sold many of each product. Now, both of these dimension tables, when we select product and month, will filter the F transactions down to just the actual sales. Now, how do we get product and date to filter this table? Well, product is easy. This is the one side. I can click and drag to product. Remember, on this side, there are lots of repeats. If there's one Aspen here, there are many Aspens here, one for each one of the months. So when I select product, it will correctly filter both of these tables. But what about date? This is the one side. Well, guess what? The end of month column, if we go look at it, here's F budget. If I pull this down, well, there's a 131.19 for Aspen. Notice lots of Aspen repeats. And down here, there's a 131. So this is actually the many side. For us, there'll be exactly three of each date because we have three products, one for each end of month. So over here, we can create a one to many relationship. Now for our product month pivot table, when I select January 2019, all the days, that means 31 days will be showing in this table. That will flow this direction and get the correct actual sales. But if there's 31 days showing here, guess what? Only one of them is going to flow across. It's the end of the month. So 131 2019 will flow across and will show only the three budgeted amounts 
for the three different products. If we look at a picture of a pivot table, here's the month column. There's January dropped into that row. Well, what happens when we do that to the date table? It shows all the rows with Januarys, which for the days means 1 to 31. That means when the filter goes from the date table over to the F transactions, there it is. All of those dates are valid. So of course, the transactional table will list every single day from January. Now what's going to happen from the one side on the date column when it flows over through the relationship to F budget? Well, it's only the last row, 13119, that flows over. And then in the F budget table, we see all three days, January 31st, 2019. Now all of that is just what January for 2019 is doing to our underlying tables. But there's also the product Aspen for this row right here, which causes the underlying D product table to be filtered down just to Aspen through the relationship that further filters the F transaction. So yes, all the days from January, but only for Aspen. And then of course down here, Aspen's the only product. That means all of the sales numbers are now used to calculate actual. And of course, there's only a single budget number, which appears right there. That means this two fact table data model and these two dimension tables will work fine. When I select a particular month, it will correctly filter both budget and actual. Product will filter budget and actual, and we're going to be able to compare the actual numbers to the budget, calculate the variances, and the percent variances. Now we go over to data view. This is the F budget table, and we could put all of our measures, including adding up the budget column, we could put them all in F transactions, but I'm going to keep one right in this table. So in the measure grid, I type up in the formula bar, budgeted sales, colon, equal sign, sum. And we're going to select over here in Power Pivot, budget column. I see the table name and the budget column name. Close parentheses and Enter. I definitely want to add some number formatting. Now we come over to F Transactions. In the Measure Grid, we'll create our measure. We'll click on the Sales column. It puts in the table and column name, close parentheses, and Enter. Add some number formatting. Below, we'll create our variance. Var, colon, equal sign, and square bracket brings up the measures we have in this model. We're going to take Actual, so Tab, minus, square bracket, B. There's our Budgeted Sales tab. Enter, add some number formatting. And it looks like over here in the measure grid where we don't have our filter context, this is the grand overall variance. So we're about 200K below our budgeted amounts. Next measure. Now we'll say var percent colon equal sign. And I'm going to use the divide function, square bracket. There's our var. That's the numerator, comma. And we want a square bracket B. We're comparing in the denominator to budgeted. Tab, close parentheses, and Enter. We'll add percent number formatting. Now we have a little bit more data modeling to do. I'm going to go over to Diagram View. I don't want any of the columns in the budget except for our budgeted sales. Click on the first, hold Shift. Click on the last, right click, Hide from Client Tool. I'm going to hide date because I don't want to slice by day by mistake because we don't have budgeted amounts. Month number we don't need, Hide from Client Tool. Hide from Client Tool. None of the columns in our fact table for transactions. Hide from Client Tool. Now we'll come back to this one in just a moment. But there's our finished data model. Up here in the Power Pivot for Excel window, we'll click the Pivot Table button. I want to put it on Existing, Collapse, B3, OK, OK. If we expand, there's our data model in the Pivot Table field list. Product down to row. Year down to rows, month down to rows. I'm going to check actual, budgeted, variance, and percent variance. And that is absolutely beautiful. If I want to see the month on top, I simply drag, and there it is. Drag it back. Now customer, I'm going to drag this over to the customers in F transaction. Because customer isn't in our budget, this is going to mess things up. If I come over to our pivot table, pivot table analyze, filter group, insert slicer, let's add customer. 
Well, of course, if I select a particular customer, some of the numbers will work. Well, of course, actual sales, and these are working, but mistakenly. Notice this isn't changing at all. We did not budget for this. So we want to remember to use attributes that were actually budgeted for. I'm going to delete this. Right click, delete, delete from model. All right, so we had a little fun with data modeling, relationships, and our measures to create our budgeted actual report. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe, because there's lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. All right, we'll see you next MSPTDA.